Hello and welcome back to another Lion Rider tutorial. Today we are learning about one of the most interesting and perhaps extreme techniques that you can do in a Lion Rider. I mean, you can kind of see on uh, my screen and you can see on Arglin's screen that we have um, <laughs> some very interesting uh, techniques. I mean, this, this is known as peg pulling. It relies on something called a sixth iteration technique, uh, something that uh, Arglin will be happy to explain to you. So uh, go ahead, Arglin. All right, so sixth iteration is essentially when you take, when you only pull on the, when a frame is created, it is split into six smaller frames, which are uh, ticks. And when you do on the sixth iteration, it triggers an or it triggers the uh, death uh, signal, just like in every other frame. However, because you're doing on the final iteration, you can take advantage of it, and because he won't die in that frame. However, in the next frame, he will die, so you have to figure out how to get him to live. In this case. I used, uh, if I get rid of this, and I pull his ass at the very last second, um, actually, don't do this. I'll just make pretend as it's not even something. At the last second, it will pull his ass down, and it will kill him. So, we take advantage of current mechanics, such as um, being able to have multiplier lines even though like it was it's possible to use just multi-lining without multipliers but because multipliers are a thing uh it makes it a lot easier to make these tricks yeah and um yeah to explain the same kind of thing but for this technique so if i zoom in here here we have the momentum tick this red line here that you can see isn't what pulls um yeah, let me make this a bit clearer, is not what pulls um, Bosch up, or Bosch's shoulder up into this position. This red line here in the first iteration is what will save him in the next. If you look at my screen now, and I remove these multi-lines, then you can see that the shoulder is still way up there, and Bosch will die. So if I get rid of that, I can re-add them. I've what this basically does is, again, as Arglin said, if you skip ahead to the to the sick iteration, which is where you can often um, get death if you do something extreme like this in the previous iteration, because we're at the final iteration of the frame, he's not able to die in this frame because the momentum tick is kind of like um, invulnerable, like he can't really die in that frame or in that iteration of the frame. So to make it live again, all you have to do, because now I'm in the momentum tick for that previous frame. I mean, you can do this in LRA. If, if I go back to the iteration one, you can do this from this frame because it shows the previous frame, or you can just go to that momentum tick and you can turn on onion skinning as well if you want to find a way of grabbing that. But yeah, essentially you need to grab this in the first iteration and then you just send it down again, and it's just a kind of rinse and repeat process. I mean, you can see there's some other stuff, like we have these red lines here, which is kind of more for stability. So do you want to explain a bit more about that, Arglin? For certain contact points, they have friction, which can cause interesting issues. Um, if I actually, I'll load up your file that you have. Sure. Which is here. If I go back and I remove this accelerator, it his arm ends up going back there because friction causes his hand, his arm to get ripped in that direction, while the rest of his sled is going in this direction. To counteract this, I simply uh, push him forward using an accelerator line, using either multiplier or multi-lining. And he essentially allows the arm to stay above him, always. 
Yep. And I mean, I know we've briefly explained how this works. So um, I think the next step would be for both of us in um, to, to try and um, recreate what you've just seen. Because, I mean, it's one thing to talk about how to do it. It's another thing to kind of show you. Definitely so, a lot easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in this case, I'm going to go with the shoulder pull. I, I don't know. Maybe Argon will do the same, or maybe he'll do the, uh, the um, butt. I'll try, I'll try something that I haven't done before. Let's try uh, um, maybe pull on the back of the sled for no reason. <laughs> sure. Let's see what we can do. So one of the reasons we're showing you this on this kind of X line is just because it's like a lot more easy to present than because I mean a lot of um, peg pulls are kind of done in fling form, but this is a very uh, smooth way to um, to make a peg pull. I mean obviously once you understand the principles behind how to do this, you can implement a peg pull however you like. So uh, yeah, the first thing to note when grabbing this is that although um, you can have up to 255 axles with the um, with the uh, new uh, multi uh, la la, x lines that are now multi like, uh, multi line multipliers and multi line yeah. close enough yeah I'm, I'm, I'm getting there slowly but um, but yeah I wouldn't have it on an exact x line because it's actually still not enough often to return them so you're gonna want a very slight angle make sure it's not like a complete X line. So then you're going to want to grab grab this and you're going to want him to pull back a little bit so that he kind of ricochets away from this red line, just makes it easier to grab him in the sick with the blue line. So now that that's working, just um, look ahead to your next frame and let's make sure that the... Oh, it doesn't look like that wants to multi-line. So just have a little play. I'm just going to drag it back a bit. I hope I haven't actually inadvertently made an X line because that would Hopefully be kind not. of triggering. <laughs> oh, probably um, a, for what you're doing right now, I recommend like when you pull it on his uh, shoulder, do it only on one tick because if you start do if he gets grabbed on it by more than one tick, it can get confusing and because he will actually get a cell on each individual frame. Yeah, tick. yeah, that's a really important thing to note. I mean, you can see here, I've kind of grabbed it in two iterations, so I'm going to try and shrink that a little bit more. Actually, um, that's actually good, because uh, on the very first iteration, uh, uh, when you first enter into that insanity, you actually need to get him into that position and then man maintain his position. So usually... Right. It takes a lot of force, and when I did the ass pull, uh, <laughs> when I did the ass pull, uh, it took a lot of force to actually get the butt down there. Yeah, there's no, so, there's no like good way of saying it other than ass pull. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. So I had to. So um, I ended up having to actually multi uh, grab him the the butt uh on two ticks to actually right. get him into the position. Sure, but in general, obviously, you don't want the tick to be every frame. So next, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I mean, you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to be like really efficient, but it's also really But then it's like, it's, it's harder, yeah, it's harder to like pluck him in the sick with another line at that point. So once you have um, that little blue line to pull him up, see if you can stack it again. In this case, because we're on, um, this exact X line, you can just continue this line without having to make new ones. And then, you know, you see if you can raise it up again, you kind of have to move that line a bit closer, and then you might be able to pull it. Kind of depends. There also does... Uh, can I get that Also, make sure that ah, the top line that does get effect, at least one of these two lines has to be um, yeah. an accelerator. Yeah, because as you can see here, we have um, some yellow. So if I go ahead of go to the momentum tick, you can see that this line is lagging behind. So you need to make one of these a red line. I'm going to, oh, for my case, uh, sometimes it doesn't work for some reason. So I'm actually taking advantage of the bottom line. That seems to be the only one that's working for me. 
it could work for the top for Hahnemann, but for me, it's the bottom line in this yeah. case. It kind of, um, it worked before when I did it, but it may be, I'm going to see if I can get more of a pull if I use a blue line instead. And yeah, it seems that for whatever reason, I can get it much higher up if I use the red line on the bottom and the blue line on the top, perhaps. Or maybe it's the same and I'm just insane. But <laughs> either way, it makes very little difference to the outcome. So yeah, just grab that, send it ahead until you have it like... Right above box. Yeah, like there you go, about above it. And then you're going to want to reach back for your little red dot. Probably multi-line that by two or three. And then... Oh, I'm going to inverse it there, and then just send it on down. Oh, in this case, mm -hmm. I can actually reduce the amount that I've multi-lined this a bit. Okay, I think I need to do two frames. There we go. One. Yep, this one, this one requires me to do two frames because it actually. Oh, the, I know why now. I know I actually <laughs> like right on the spot while we're making the tutorial. I figure out. <laughs> um, so once he gets pulled up there, that contact point. It once did maintain its momentum, so it ends up going past that. It goes double distance. So you can't just pull it down in because if you pull it down that amount of force, then it's only going to get back to its original position. So right. you need to actually take two iterations to pull them all the way back down to normal. Yeah. And um one tip with this is once you've made one frame, you can just like kinda copy and paste. You can stack what you just it. Did. Yeah. Oops, I did something weird. Well, I mean, sixth iteration is going to be weird nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, let's try that again. Okay. Ooh, this is an interesting question. In this case, I think I have to... Uh... Oh, boy. I have a very, very interesting predicament. I have to actually use three um, iterations. <laughs> because um, I angled this a bit too far back, so it, his sled ends up going oh, over wow. there. And <laughs> it might be too much for the top line to handle, so I'm actually going to add this line here, just in case that might be an issue. Oh, never mind, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Always safety first. <laughs> Yeah, stay safe. Says the person who is like literally tearing his body apart. <laughs> yeah. yes. so, so, like, so many of these phrases just make zero sense when you're making six iteration tricks. Yeah, this is some, some strange stuff we're kind of attempting. Oh. Now, once I get hold of this, it should be a bit easier. Yeah, there we go. So just put it there. Is that going to get caught in the fifth again? It looks like it may have done. Let's just see if I can grab this little blue. Um, there we go. Damn. Do you think I can do a peg manual? <laughs> manual. That would be like. That would be yeah. some some next level. Next level insanity. Yeah. Next level insanity and stupidity. <laughs> Such as line writer. Class C style line writer. Yeah. There you go. And then. Oh shit. Back. What the hell is happening with the frames? There you go. That seems to work. Oh, uh, wait, I <laughs> think I know why this keeps dying. It's because I like multi lined it. With, I left the uh, multi lines over from the copy and paste. Oh, quick tip um, don't uh, actually delete that, delete that dot that you're trying to move around. Oh, yeah? Uh, go back to the previous frame. Yeah. Highlight that, highlight that uh, blue dot right there. Yeah. Uh, hold N. Press N first before okay. you copy. Copy Whoa. next frame. Uh, paste, and then zoom in very, very closely, and then holding Control Shift and X uh, and uh, Alt, shift it around until it actually pulls him up. Okay. Because now he will be in a stable position when he gets out of it. 
Seems to just uh, die in every single one. <laughs> <laughs> um, try maybe then. Um, you see the bomb line, the bomb red line below yeah. it. Try to pull that uh farther back. So then his his um contact point gets more agitated. Yeah, yeah. There we there go. There you go. Yeah, I needed to put far away. Right. There you go, folks. If you're having that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Even the even even being the person who actually create who uh created the stackable um technique is struggling to figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah, and um, for those who are unaware, Arglin created this little thing that I'm making now the other day. So yeah, I've made two frames of this now. And yeah. then afterwards, you can literally just stack the same thing over and over again. Yep. Um, because you're oh the po one positive thing about um a multiplier, it doesn't it no matter what always acts like a multi line no matter the angle or how it's touched. Yep. So like that's the one issue that we had prior to um uh, update one point zero four, which was sometimes multi lining doesn't actually work, which is annoying and it makes six iteration extremely difficult to do. Okay, so um, I think at this point we've essentially shown you how to make a simple one. I mean, we can see Arglin is kind of going for it with some with some other um, form. I'm doing an, a bizarre ass fling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think um, I mean I think we'll probably wrap it up here. I mean I don't think we have much else to say. So, yeah, um, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, maybe um, if Arglin ends up finishing this, I'll add um, a time lapse. Yeah, to that just add it to the, the end uh, of the video. Yeah, add it to the end of the video or something, so you can see um, kinds of bizarre stuff the that outcome. can be made. But um, yeah, that'll do it for this tutorial. Thanks, thanks for uh, watching. Leave some love and hate down below, and uh, <laughs> we shall see you next time. See ya.